Hi and welcome to Scott's Inverts. I'm Scott. These are the inverts and today we're going to be looking at the Philippine Tangerine Tarantula, the Orphanaceous Philippinus. It looks like a tr cross between a true spider and a tarantula, those stunning long long legs, making it quite a fast species as well as these should really be more popular than they are. They've been around since 1999. They're not very expensive. And they're absolute stunning orange masterpiece. So let's get into today's video. So our Orphanicus Philippinus is found in the Philippines, more specifically Luzon, which is L-U-Z-O-N and the country's largest island up there in the north with strong colonial Spanish links. Now this island, and in Luzon, the summers are short and hot, the winters are also short, warm and windy, and it is wet and overcast all year round. Over the course of the year, the temperature typically goes between 25 degrees Celsius and 31 degrees Celsius, and it hardly ever drops below 24 degrees or goes above 32 which in Fahrenheit is between 72 and 86, which makes this country very warm, very damp all year round. So here is my female. Now these are an old world for Sorial burrower, the venom. Um, there's not much I could research about the venom, but it's not particularly strong, although it is still nasty. Now these will grow up to around 15 centimeters. The growth rate is fast. They're fast, nervous, and they're very, very skittish. Their lifespan, the females, can live up to 12 years. The males up to four. Now, the females can mature between three to four years, and the males between 18 months to two years. We want to be keeping these between 24 to 28, so I'll keep mine at 26 degrees. And humidity, we need to keep that humidity up, so be keeping live plants in yours, moss, and keeping that substrate nice and damp. Now I've been talking to somebody over in the Philippines and they do say they find these guys on the sides of hills. So that's what I'm gonna try and recreate in the enclosure is, is some sort of slope in the enclosure to see if it will actually burrow in. If it doesn't, it will burrow down and it will still be completely fine. We're gonna put moss in there, um, some cork bark for it to hide under. We're gonna obviously include that plant as well. So. Here's the substrate. The substrate is a mix between B&Q's very own pot and compost and cocoa coir. Now the reason I've used the B&Q pot and compost is because it's cheap. It's not fully decomposed so there's still bits of twig, bits of stick in there just like you'd find on a forest floor. Um, I've gone for that slope. Hopefully it will go in on the diagonal there. So I've put this cork bark in, left that little piece of a hollow underneath so it's got somewhere to hide, somewhere to retreat as soon as it goes in there and hopefully that's where its burrow will be. Now in the future once it's made its burrow we'll be lucky if we ever see this tarantula. A lot of the times they do put their feet at the front of the burrow and just fly out for food and disappear. So now we've gone ahead, we've put that plant in, we've put a lot of moss up across the back coming down the sides to try and help with that humidity and keep that humidity up high just like it would find in its natural environment. Now we've gone, we've put that water dish in, we've also added some springtails in there and there's some dwarf white isopods. The dwarf white isopods are not calcium dependent so there's no worry about those munching your spider while it's going through a molt. I'm really really liking these bioactive setups we're doing right here at Scott's Inverts when you first set a bioactive up it's not complete bioactive we call it pseudo naturalistic which basically means it looks like nature but it's not going to be bioactive until a good three six to twelve months down the line where things are growing the plants are growing the moss is growing but you do need to keep on top of that maintenance so if you do find live food that's died in there remember to remove it as well as any spider waste there she is absolutely stunning now these were actually and these guys were actually first described in 1999 by Schmitz and they were put into the genus Acelicanona brachypace, Philippinus. Now in 2012, West Nun and Hogg actually revised it and they went into the Orphanaceous. And just to see us out, here's a close up of our girl for one last time, the Philippine Tangerine. 
Boom, so at the start of this video, I did tell you they were an orange masterpiece. My God, this girl certainly don't let you down. She had the looks. She's absolutely stunning. And like I said at the beginning of this video, a species that everybody should really, really have in their collection. They're not very expensive at all. You can pick them up from most places. I think that one would cost around £15. I bought it from Spa Spiders. Um, absolutely stunning, stunning species. Let me know down in the comments if you keep one. The reason I got one, I actually found out they exist through Mark the Spider Guy. He had one, he did a video, and it was absolutely stunning. I looked at it and I thought, I really, really need to get one of these in my collection as well. So we've had our gill for around six months. My God, I do really, really like this tarantula. Anyway, guys, that's enough of me waffling on. Let me just tell you that this Tuesday, we have a live with Dave's Little Beasties. He's going to be joining us. It's just going to be complete spider talk. So we're going to be answering any questions that you have concerning your hobby. Maybe maybe husbandry, maybe you're new to the hobby and you want a bit of, bit of support with something. Come along Tuesday. It's always a good laugh. And <laughs> it's going to be an absolutely fantastic night. Anyway. We shall see you again on the next one.